All right, guys, welcome back. We're rounding out the old middle of the first second round here at 2-3. Um, Casey's going to be on the clock here with Tickle Monsters team. <laughs> this team just drafted a young stud in the making and Nick Chubb in the first round at 1-3. And um, what, what can you do here, Casey, with this team to further add talent? Make a pick. Yeah, let's do it. Well, with this pick at 2-3, um, I'm going to take Naheem Hines here. Whoa. And... Told you three in a row, blowing it. We're blowing it in the second round. Anthony Miller <laughs> off the just tracks over keeps here. hanging out. No man's land. Hopefully, he didn't come to the draft because he's been sitting in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm gonna get to the reason why here. So when you look at this team, tickle monsters. Obviously, like Big Co said, I drafted Chubb for this team the first go round. Um, and then other than that, he's basically just got Melvin Gordon as a starting running back. Yeah. Um, the other running backs are Doug Martin, who I take. I'm taking a lot of. I've, I'll swing on Doug Martin at the end of a lot of drafts. Got he, no problem with it. I got sets, a soft spot for old Doug. Yeah, you but do. it could be. It's it's, it's a gamble. It and didn't look great last year. Right, it didn't. Doug, look, it looked awful last year. Doug Martin is setting up to be absolutely free. Right at this um, point in time, if if you're doing the you know the old uh, best ball drafts and stuff right now, Doug Martin costs you nothing. Sure. So and then Bilal Powell's his other running back who, they're. Uh, did fantastic with the opportunities given to him last year, Limited but not a guy that I'm trusting Limited to be my second running back or be a startable third running back if that's the route that I want to go. And then James White, which it's always up and down. They just added Sony, and there's it's all over the place. So you got Melvin and you got Chubb, but I love Chubb as much as the next guy, and I do think Chubb is going to be a workhorse. I have no problem taking Chubb 1-3 overall. He is my 1-3, but he could kind of live in running back purgatory this year and just sure. kind of be... there's. Duke Johnson and Carlos Hyde over there. I don't know if he comes right into a workhorse role. He, maybe he's getting you 12 carries a game or something there's a like chance, that. And, there's a chance Nick Chubb roster clogs you for a season. Right. That's so, a chance. So outside of that, he's got really no running backs, and you're scared to start Chubb every week. Um, and then you go down to the receivers here. He's got Michael Thomas. He's got Aguilar. He's got Will Fuller. He's got Julian Edelman coming back, who say what you want. But if he's out there and healthy, Tommy's going to hit him up. He's got Cam Meredith coming back. Uh, who's now with Drew Brees. He's got Juju Smith-Schuster. He's got D-Jax. He's got Keelan Cole. He's got Curtis Samuels. So bottom end of this bench, there's a bunch of guys that if you really needed one of those three to start some week, you probably could in your receiver spot. So I think it was pretty tough making this decision. Obviously, Anthony Miller's the best player available on this board to me, um, and I really love his skill set. Uh, but this team really needs a running back, and I, if you're going to compete, week in, week out, and try to get to a playoff, this team is going to need some production out of the running back two spot, and I think Naheem Hines can get that for this team. Yeah, I mean, this is an explosive dude, and, and there's not a lot that the Colts have going on. Um, we didn't really do a breakdown for Naheem Hines uh, in the, in the pre-draft or post-draft of our, you know, we just didn't get all the way that deep into the running backs, so right. we kind of had to do that for this coming up, and I mean, it's easy to tell that he that he's explosive. The highlight tape is really fun to watch. He's got some solid balance. He's he's similar to Mac in in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, especially like when people are trying to tackle him from behind or scraping it like the the shoes or the the jersey. He just it's hard to get a hand on him, and he never Tough gets to wrangle. He never really gets tripped up. He's got that good you know contact balance. Right. And he does a bit say. of bouncing outside. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll, I could knock him all day for his running back abilities in between right. the tackles. Um, but that's not really what you're – you're not drafting him for a between-the-tackle runner here. And no. Clearly, I could have drafted Anthony Miller here and taken – or and kept Miller or taken Miller and paired him with some of these receivers and made a play for an established running back right. or – you know, made a play for another younger, younger running back. But that's also not what we're really doing here. Exactly. So I wanted to – take Hines here and and give you some reasons why I'm taking him and I just I think the biggest reason overall is that he's loaded at receiver and that I think Hines can come in and he's got the best chance to be obviously Belage is gone because Big Co took him at 2-1 but still Belage to me has a better chance of coming right in and being an RB a startable RB2 for your team no you said Belage but you meant Hines or so Hines has a better chance of coming in and yeah. being a startable RB2 for, for your squad especially for this team who is clearly starting most of receivers every week um yeah, with the exit, with the exit of Frank Gore from the Colts, I mean, nobody's scared of Robert Turbin to gun show, which, you know, he could come in there he and could and get the bulk of he, early down carries. He could here. get the bulk of all early down carries, but between it's basically Marlon Mack 
and Nine Hines and Wilkins. Right. So right. So and and there's all no of them, workhorse imminent is basically it, exactly right. Zero proven out of any of these guys. Right. Basically, Marvin Marlon Mack looked good in some spots last year, and he looked not so good at some spots last year. Did play year. with so, a torn labrum. So though. basically, yep. at this point, it's free range Colts running backs. Sure. Free range. Sure. Right. So I could have also went Gasecki here, who I've I've I think that's a the best home run cut on the board. He could use a you could use a tight end here. He's got Howard and Seals Jones, which isn't the strongest room. But how often does Gasecki come in and or a rookie tight end come in and really help your room right away? I'd probably be trying to poke around and find a wily veteran to start rather than right. rolling the dice on Gasecki. Or I'm probably going Howard. Or you got Seals Jones who could turn into something all right. And in, and in a one tight end, no premium league, a lot of people are struggling at the tight end yeah. position. Yeah. Um, but like you guys said, man, the biggest thing is that there is no imminent uh, workhorse in this backfield role, imminent workhorse role in this back backfield. And I feel like there's an immediate PPR upside to Hines. Like you said, it, we're not, I'm not drafting him to be your between the tackle guy. I'm drafting him to be the guy who can get you can get the ball to him in space. And on the top of all that, you know, the Colts already have quite the shaky wide receiver room. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I love taking shots on uh, Grant and Rodgers and Kane and Fountain late in drafts. Cause, yeah. You know, it could really pan out for you. I have no problem taking those. Actually, I love taking those guys later on in drafts. Give me all of them. Somebody's going to catch some balls. Um, but Hines could get every opportunity to get snaps out of that slot. And he's a receiver in his, in his day. A and he caught college. plenty of balls in college. And obviously 89. the coach come out and as much as said, you know, hey, I love this guy's hands. His intelligence has been off the charts and he's going to, you know, he's going to see snaps at the slot. Obviously this is all meaningless at this point. Take it for what it is. It's yeah. a headline. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's a coach giving his rookie a nod of saying, Hey, you know, we, yeah. we believe in you here, young fella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as what's going on in the back, well, one field, more thing, one yep, more thing, yep, take it, take the, it. The, the piece of all this that I haven't even mentioned yet, that, if and when Andrew Luck comes back and plays, this offense will be humming right along and there'll be balls going everywhere and the, the offense will sustain drives and score points and, and, and do all of those things. I agree. So this is the, that's the biggest upside of this pick is Andrew Luck is just sitting there, which I believe that this man's going to play football again. I, everyone's all freaking out, but I, I think he's going to be just fine. He went over and got his shoulder taken care of. He's following, just being precautious. Went to Europe. I had some stem cells right. probably. Kobe did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, He'll, I, I believe he'll be all right and back. He has no reason. Andrew, what does he need to throw a football for? Yeah. Why did, he doesn't need to throw a football until they're a couple of weeks out. Yeah. He knows how to do it. Oh, yeah. Like, he didn't forget. <laughs> like this. If, if, as far as you're saying that, now's a great time to come in and lowly invest into the Colts offense. Right. Andrew Luck included. Um, obviously, I'm, T. Not, y. Hilton's I'm not a quarterback guy. On. T. Y. Hilton has pushed down as far as he's been in three years. Um, like you said, the Deion Canes of the world, those kind of guys can be picked up for dirt cheap. Uh, Ryan Grant, I think, is going to have an opportunity to be a monster as far as targets go. If luck comes around, obviously, you got a couple toy tight ends there with Ebron and Jack Doyle. Just go pick up some Colts guys on the cheap. We're at with the potential of a luck coming back, what they could do for that, that turnaround value. Not like you're going to pay the type of value, like, not like, hey, go, let me go out and grab some Saints and some Rams and some Patriots type of thing where you know you know it's already established the values up there you can come in and get the colts very cheap so marlon max on the roster and he had a lot more rushing attempts in college than nine himes did not necessarily as prolific hines had a 43 catch season as a sophomore but only really started getting the rock last year but he played in the acc so he had a decent, you know, 5.6 yards of carry, went over 1,100 yards, still caught 26 balls, 12 rushing touchdowns. You know, and to top all this off, he's a phenomenal kick and punt returner, which we'll which get. Helps. We'll talk to that in a, that, to that point in a second. But they've changed the kickoff rule, and he's a guy they can use in the kickoff, and it's a little bit more like a punt. So the opportunity, more opportunities for Hines to get you points and and six points at, on a kickoff. Okay, that and just be in the game if he's not necessarily earning a spot on the field if he if didn't earn a spot right. as a running as a running back between you know downs one through three nothing else when the other team's kicking it back to you maybe he's on the field and makes it you know earns more of the coach's trust as the season goes on as some rookies have to do um just wanted to touch on some of those numbers there for those guys um you know marlon mack we serial bouncer last year coming out we you know kind of 
home run explosive type of player. Very. He was one of my favorite. Yeah. Shots to take in the draft. A shot, and 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 eventually he got up too high where it wasn't a shot anymore, and I was out. Exactly. So, and that's my. I'm so glad you said that because that's where Nine Hines a couple months ago. It was hey, it was just it, it was kind of trickling around in the back, standing in the corner, or the back of the draft room. I mean, I've seen him. I saw him go. I think it was at one twelve or two one maybe. And it, what well, I think is we it? saw him at one one ten in one of our. Was it? I, I'll go back and look at that, and I should throw you that in the after show. Like nine Hines secrets out. People, somebody's trying to take him in your draft. If you got twelve guys or more on your team in your league, somebody's staring this guy down. So it's not like you're going to be able to get him. You know super cheap anymore and so you're really like casey just took him over anthony miller so you're making a stand here you're putting in some putting well, in mostly little... mostly just because of the structure of this team okay fair like enough. that's that's the whole point but of this normally, process of what we're doing we're drafting because miller of teams yeah. and needs and just seeing what this team might need to to win and do its thing it's fine at receiver it's got plenty of guys loaded i'm taking the guy who could, Fair enough. You know, the, the RB2 who could get me some catches and, and I could be startable because I'm not sure if I'm going to even... I don't even really have one of those. Everything's up in the air in my second running back spot right now. True. That's the reason why I'm taking Anthony him over Anthony Miller. In most cases, I'm taking Anthony Miller over Hines. Yeah. I think I think I got to take Anthony Miller here. Um, I, I, I get the Hines pick. You know, he had 89 career receptions. He he said he caught 70 of those balls from the slot. He threw that stat out himself on uh, it was a Good Morning Football or something I was watching. Um, and, and and he did average 5.6 yards per carry, as you mentioned, Big Co. He made 22 career starts in college. Ten of them were at wide receivers. So that that all sounds pretty good. I think the 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 problem that I have with him is 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 that it's it's mostly just the straight line speed. And if you give him a path, I mean, he obviously ran the fastest 40 of any running back in the combine yeah. and he's got f- pretty phenomenal straight line speed but it doesn't it, he just doesn't look like the most shiftiest guy f- to me when that's kind of his mo you don't see he, it, he struggles a little bit with gearing down i don't love the change of direction you don't see him making people look silly out there um like which is evident he didn't run a sub seven second three cone drill which i hate <laughs> right. that um, and and, he, and you see him take a lot of big shots. Like even in the highlight tape, he's taking some shots. And you get into like I think maybe there's like two games you can watch. Yeah, uh, not on draft breakdown. And, and you, you, you just you see him getting blown up a couple times. I don't like that because he is so small, five eight, hundred ninety eight pounds. If you're a sizeist at all, you're gonna be you know scoffing yeah, I, a little I, bit at that. I, I was ready to jump on that train real quick on on top. I was ready to yell that out. But when you think about it, like. You know, Christian He's basically McCaff- playing Christian, slot receiver. Christian McCaffrey here. sitting here at two oh five. So what's the seven, so plenty of seven guys, pound difference? Right. Like there's two hundred pound running backs in here, and there's the nobody's there's, expecting this guy to carry the ball up the middle right. of the field. Right. They're and expecting him to get in space, catch some balls, and get up field. Get in slot, catch the ball, get up field. Yeah. That's true. That's all you're asking. And about. I actually liked what I saw from him in pass protection. So that that's gonna that's gonna bode well for him. And you know the receiving ability is is really nice. Um, I. I if you got if you got return yardage in your league, I think yeah, I think maybe that that's a little bit of an upside. But even then, I saw him making some bad decisions in in the return game. Like I mean, he 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 returned some balls that he shouldn't have returned. He tripped and fell and did like I I know I complimented him on his balance. Maybe that's just some fluke stuff. And there like I said, there wasn't too many games to see, but it wasn't like. I mean, he, he did average 24.7 yards on kick returns. He only had 12 punts. He didn't return a lot of punts at all in college. He took he did take one of them to the house. Um, he said he he returned a lot of punts in high school, more so Everybody than kicks. Does. But, you know, he doesn't have, like, a ton of experience in the punt return game. Um, but I think he'll get on the field with, with, with kick returns. I don't know how – with the new, we'll discuss the new rules and stuff a little bit, but I don't know – yeah, I don't know. I I just I wanted to like him a lot, and then I came away not liking him a ton. But then I I get the receiving ability, so it's, and that's what you're after in here. You're not after a running back here. You're after a guy who can catch the ball yeah. and get upfield. That's all you're after here. And there is nobody to really take his role on this team away from him. Is yeah, and, is, and to is double, what I'm into. To double, There's no playmakers. There's not a ton of there. Who's going to be the slot receiver on this team? And he can get snaps his running back and catch the ball and. Just like you said, 
okay pass protector. Well, maybe to double down on what you just said a minute ago, if if Luck's in there playing ball, there's space to be had. Right. Because you're going to – obviously, T.Y. Hilton will stretch the defense no matter who's playing quarterback, but if you can't throw him the ball and deliver an accurate pass 30 yards down the field, it doesn't matter. Right. So if Luck's out there, you'll have space, and maybe that, that really takes off. The one last thing about this backfield is, though, you have the Jordan Wilkins who comes in at 6'1", 217. So it's going to be him and Turbin fighting for early down rolls. Right. But the exact same type of college-looking profile as far as stats go that Hines comes in, first couple years, not a whole lot. Then he gets some run as a senior in the SEC from Ole Miss with 155 totes, just over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, and 26 catches. So same type of thing that Hines – Completely different player, though. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely not the fastest guy to combine and uh, you know, not a not drafted in a sense where he's, hey, this is our – our scat back this right. is our this know, is let's take a chance on a guy and see if he blossoms into right. something great for it, our team this is this is the, the colts drafted he came out of nowhere he played great in the sec hoping that got maybe his chance acc hoping that maybe he sec for oh you're wilkins. talking about wilkins my bad yeah hoping that you know hines could become a darren sproles guy not right so this which then leads me to the rb2 production you're looking well for. no let's obviously frank reich takes over this team okay as the head coach um, now he was with the Chargers, uh, 14, 15, and, and before that, and then with the Eagles in 16 and 17. So we don't really know what this system's necessarily going to look like. Um, but when you, when you go and you dig into stuff of what Frank Reich's saying and what Doug Peterson says about him and all that kind of stuff, um, he's basically, Reich says it's going to be an up-tempo offense and uh, with aggressive, you know, kind of play calling. Um, he's going to call the plays, but it'll kind of be a collective effort, which is, exactly what they just did in Philadelphia. Reich and Peterson sat down and they built this offense together. Mm -hmm. Peterson's calling the shots, but Reich has his hands all over that offense. Um, And, you know, when they, when he talks about it, he's talking about he's building around the players on the roster and what they do well, which is something that you love to hear. And, you know, not everybody does that. Reich just commit, just put together a nice offense over there in Philadelphia um, and then when you look at the Eagles running back room, you know, you see this maybe one kind of shaping up like the Eagles running back room just did of there isn't really one guy and there's some p- parts and pieces moving around. Well, the good part and piece of this guy, I know you can sit there and say, well, which running back did you really want last year for the Eagles? Well, Drew. Darren Sproles got hurt. Right. And the year before that, you saw Darren Sproles have 94 attempts, Crushed 71 it. targets and 52 receptions mm-hmm. and, and just get tons of work in that offense. Um, and then you go to Philly and you got Aguilar in the slot and some good receivers and, and weapons all around you. And when you come to Indianapolis, you know, Hines has a good chance of maybe seeing a bit more action in the slot. Good, good call. Don't um, have don't have the weapons that, that, that Philadelphia did on the outside and right. in the slot to take targets. From Eagles you. just went to the Super Bowl without a main guy. Yeah. And so that 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 could lead to some even more run for Hines here and there. He's clear that Doug Peterson likes to throw it to a guy when Woodhead was in 2015, had 106 targets, 80 catches, six touchdowns. Yep. Um, along with Melvin Gordon getting 37 targets with 33 receptions, average 5.8 um uh, a reception there and then 2016 they lose woodhead early melvin gordon has 16 only plays 13 games he has 57 uh targets for 41 catches and then between pharaoh woodhead and hillman you got 32 more targets because they had a revolving door of no doubt so about there's, it there's room to be back catching balls in this type of offense and you know that he wants to do that or at least i you don't know but you would to putting all the context clues together you would think that this is what now you didn't see a ton of players catching a large volume of balls last year in the Philadelphia offense. But I think that's just because there wasn't a guy that they thought. And then you saw Corey Clement come on in the, in, in the playoff, free right, agent which is the reason why I time. believe that he was right. Wasn't in the mix of things early because hey, you're well, supposed to be. You got well, it's it. Not supposed but then when to you be. get in the playoff run, him and Ajay kind of take things over and, and you see a lot of catches coming out of Corey Clement. So yeah. I think there's a lot of room in this system for a guy like Hines to produce at a high volume of catches. I really like that you put all that together because you, when you go back and it sounds a little crazy. Yeah, you said Danny Woodhead and you said this, but like those, that's you. Do, Danny Woodhead doesn't coach to catch those balls if there's not a game plan specific to throw it to a running back in space. And that's all you're saying. You don't have here. Dan, you don't pick Danny Woodhead up on your team if you didn't plan on throwing it to a smaller, shiftier guy out of the backfield. Is that that's it? That's it. So. 
There's my Naheem Hines over Anthony Miller. It's basically predicated on the fact that this team had a ton of receivers and needed an RB2, but I'm making my case for Hines here, and I'm okay with you taking Hines anywhere in this you know kind of second roundish area. Just again, running backs over receivers for the most part. I'm with Big Co. And but I just don't know. Most if he's times I'm taking Anthony. Is, is Miller. everyone gives him credit for? I just don't. We'll see. I don't know if he's a shifty. I hope I so. I don't really care about that. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. really care how shifty he is. He's fast in a straight you line. Get you want to space. You just said he had good balance. What? What? Let him. Let him try to get you around the edge, and then guard me when I'm in the slot or coming out of the backfield as a receiver. Yeah. So, and I'm sure right. he'll still get a couple of attempts. So, that's where. I, that's what I'm going with with Hines. You guys can all suck it. <laughs> <laughs> all let's right. Suck it right to break. Let's, let's suck it to break. Let's grab a couple suck it beers. long and suck it hard, Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back, back with pick two four. <laughs>